I'm Dr. Melissa, soul strategist, physician, integrative wellness specialist, intuitive healer, and CEO of Sustainably You, where we help you tap unrealized potentials, getting out of your own way to create abundance in all areas of life. Today, for Transformation Tuesday, we are talking about energy leaks. I like to think of energy leaks as these holes in your bucket. Here you have this bucket of energy that you can use for all kinds of things, right? Working on your health, working on your relationships, working on your career or business, creating more impact in the world. And when you have all of these holes in your bucket, they are just draining you of the energy that you could be using to do all of those things that are important to you. Today we're talking about 18 hidden energy leaks. Did you even know there were 18? I know there are more, but we had to limit this video to something. So we're talking about 18 common energy leaks that could be robbing you of the energy right now that would otherwise produce maximal results in all areas of your life. Now, if you've watched or heard me before, you know we talk a lot about mind, body, and spirit. And so these energy leaks fall into those categories as well. We can have energy leaks for our body that are impacting our ability to function, our ability to operate sort of at full speed or um, full tilt. We can have mental energy leaks that are draining and zapping our energy. We can have spiritual energy leaks that can be so subtle, they can be so almost insignificant that we don't even notice them because they're so commonplace, yet they can really be depriving us of the energy that we already have to do more things. So often people used to ask me as a doctor, where can I get more energy? How can I feel more energy? And getting more energy is an important part of things, right? But holding on to what you have is equally important. That becomes sustainable because it doesn't matter how much energy you pour in that bucket. If you've got 18 large holes, you're not going to have much left at the end of the day or even by noon. So plugging those holes, Stopping those energy leaks is paramount to being able to do the things that you want to do, to be the way that you want to be, and to show up the way you want to show up in this world. All right, so let's get started. We're going to talk about body energy leaks first. Caffeine. Caffeine is a huge one because caffeine makes people think that they are getting more energy from it, when in reality, for many people, that is not the case. If you are someone, especially someone with light hair or you know blonde hair, red hair, oftentimes caffeine will make you sleepier. You can drink more of it and sort of get that kick, but it actually depletes your energy. Not to mention the fact that it messes with your sleep schedule and it makes you dependent on a substance to get the uh, energy feel that you want Caffeine is a big no-no if you want to plug your energy leaks. Sugar. You know I'd say sugar, right? Sugar is huge, and yet so many people feel that sugar also gives them an energy boost. I can tell you, back when I was writing books and things many years ago, I would use sugar to keep myself awake. But the problem with sugar is you get the high, and then you get a major crash, or you get the low. And it's hard to maintain consistency and to keep going when you're cycling through sugar highs and lows. Sugar itself is inflammatory for the body. It causes more fatigue and exhaustion over time. And it is something to avoid when you are looking to plug those holes. White flour is going to be really similar to sugar. It's also pro-inflammatory in terms of its effects on your body. That means your body is sort of fighting itself while it is trying to do the other things that you're asking it to do, carrying out throughout the day. Sort of like giving it an extra, you know, 50 pound bag of potatoes to carry around while it's doing its work. Asking your body to fight itself 
while you're doing everything else is sort of shooting yourself in the foot. It's creating a drag on your energy. It makes you exhausted. Alcohol. Alcohol may be an obvious one for a lot of people. It's a depressant. It definitely kind of slows you down. It decreases the speed at which you're thinking and processing information. This is why some people find it's useful to relax. But is it really? Alcohol impacts your body. It impacts your connection to your soul, to your spirit for up to 24 hours. I noticed a few years ago that where I had previously enjoyed a glass of wine paired with a nice meal, that I really stopped drinking because I am like lit up and on fire and I do not need to be slowed down for 24 hours and lose that connection that gives me such complete clarity as to what step to take next because of alcohol. If you are drinking a lot of alcohol or if you're drinking it several days a week, that is an energy leak that you definitely want to look at. Lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is another huge energy leak. So often we get this idea in our head like we just have to get, you know, these next 24 things on our to-do list done and then we can actually relax. Then we can go to sleep. Only those next 24 things never get done. And when we are not well rested, when we are not sleeping enough, when we are not giving our body, our mind, our spirit time to fully recharge overnight, we are starting out our day with a half empty tank of gas. <laughs> now, everyone would typically would say I'm an optimist. I'm a tank half full kind of person, but I don't wanna start out my day with a half full tank. I wanna start out on fire and, and do what I wanna do with my day. Prioritizing enough sleep is an energy leak that absolutely has to be fixed in order to have the energy available to you to do the things that you want during the day. Being sedentary is another one of those energy leaks of the body. This has become really common. They say being sedentary is kind of like the new sugar, right? It's, it's contributing to obesity and heart disease and all kinds of things. But being sedentary is actually not just saving our calories to be used later. It doesn't give us more energy to use later. It actually, by not stoking our metabolism and getting things rolling, it actually makes us more exhausted, more tired than we would have been if we had worked out or done something else. So getting up and moving at least once an hour, moving around for five or 10 minutes, go for a walk, it's gorgeous outside now. These kind of things will plug that energy leak hole that is leaving you feel absolutely exhausted at the end of the day, even though your you know, step count is a thousand, uh, you know, because you're staying at home. Getting up and moving will give you the energy to do the things that you want to do. So moving on to the energy leaks of the mind. The mind is often more subtle because it, it's things that we haven't talked about as much. Most of you, I'm sure, have heard to lay off the sugar and to not be sedentary. The mind energy leaks can be so subtle that we don't even know that they're there. We don't even know that, they're, that we're doing them and they're draining a lot of our energy. So the first one is comparisons. The mind likes to compare a lot, right? I joined this program. This other person is doing so much better than I am. Um, this other person is so much more successful or I have so much education. Why am I not able to do as well as this person over here? Or why did that person get picked for the promotion when, when I have so much to offer. Those comparisons, the mental gymnastics that goes into the back and forth of, you know, what's better, this or that or whatnot, is not only completely pointless, but it is a complete 
waste of energy and it is mentally extremely draining. It is amazing how often our mind can sit in one of these tennis matches of thinking things and you know if you if you ever want to do an experiment i'm not sure i'd suggest this experiment but on a high energy day you sit in a place of comparing for five minutes and see what your energy is like after my guess is you don't need to do that as a proactive experiment to know exactly what the result would be so you've got to stop comparing yourself to other people other things and other people's results another mental energy leak is hustling. Hustling is one of those things that people talk all about in the business world. You have to be a hustler. You have to be working nonstop. You have to, you know, be, be doing things all the time. And I was in one uh, high level coaching program where people were creating accountability partnerships to make each other shower every day because they were working like 20 hours a day trying to work 20 hours a day, that's going to be 20 hours of rather unproductive work for the average person. There is a reason that in some countries people only work four or six hours in a day. Most people can only be maximally productive for four to six hours in a day. And yes, there may be buffer tasks that they do in additional hours during the day, but they're highly productive high energy tasks are done in those six to eight hours. When you are working 16, 18, 20 hours a day consistently, you're not getting enough sleep. You're being sedentary, most likely. I mean, not very many people have treadmill desks, right? You're not focusing on your spirit, meditating. You're not necessarily focusing on your mind. Those things are massive energy leaks. So would you rather get the same amount done in eight hours or in 20? <laughs> that one's an easy question for me to answer. And if you want to plug that energy leak hole, the mindset of hustling has got to change. Another mental energy leak is expectations. Expectations are the way we set ourselves up to be disappointed, essentially. Expectations are, you know, sitting and thinking so far in the future instead of being in the present moment that you expect that you take some action and something is gonna happen. And then it doesn't happen and you end up disappointed and now you're deflated and you have really low energy and you can't even go about meeting that, that goal. So here's an example. I could have a sales consult call with a client and I could have expectations that this is the perfect client and that this client is going to is going to, you know, become a client of mine. And the call might go such that the person is not ideal for work with me and I refer them to someone else or the person could be a perfect client or it could be that the person's just not ready. They might be a perfect client someday, but they're just not ready to do that work. When I am open to the possibility and without expectation, all of those answers is awesome. But if I'm completely attached to the one answer that this has to be the perfect client and they have to want to work with me, then if that's not the case, I could end up disappointed, just deflated, and not show up in a way to reach out with the next five people who are asking to talk to me. So letting go of expectations around everything that we're doing, around how quickly we reduce weight, around how quickly we find a significant other, around how our kids are doing in school during this shelter at home period, those expectations are a drag on our psyche, on our spirit, and on our energy, and they're not doing you any good. The next uh, mental energy leak is technology. Technology is super awesome, right? It's supposed to make things easier. 
they, it definitely is amazing to carry around this little computer that is my phone and to be able to play music and record videos like this for you right now. Technology is awesome. And technology, because it's ever present, because Steve Jobs did such a fantastic job of making it an extension of our own physical being. It's there all the time. And not only can it rob our energy and our productivity by distracting us with text dings or messenger dings or, um, you know, LinkedIn dings um, and banners and messages, it can also completely tank our energy when we shift focus off of what we're doing that is moving us forward, where we're stepping into opportunity and possibility, and we instead step out of our present moment with technology, stepping into social media or uh, news media or other things, where now we are getting riled up by some sort of political arguments or, you know, whether or not we it is safe to, you know, reopen the country or not, or any number of things. It is amazing to me the number of things right now that people are fighting about on social media. You know, mail-in voting versus in-person voting reopening versus not, what type of reopening, whether people should wear masks or not. There are so many things that people are arguing about and that toxic negative energy will tank yours in a flash. So it's not the, the two minutes of productivity that you lose by looking at your phone in the middle of the day. It's the, it's the energy that you can't get back because it's been completely stolen from you in taking on the agitation and the negative energy that you're feeling from the outside world. Now, by no means am I suggesting, you know, burying your head in the sand and just not paying attention, but there is a time and a place, right? It's not just a matter of being self-disciplined to, you know, stick to your block schedule. It's a matter of protecting your energy. I love my energy so much and I want to use it for good things that I will not let it get stolen in the middle of my day by social media or by emails that are challenging or other things. I will set aside a time after I'm done with everything that requires me to really show up for you and for my clients at the highest level, I will do those other things later in the day. And if you want to plug this energy hole, I strongly encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, next mental energy leak is multitasking. That sounds crazy, right? People think that multitasking is a great thing, that that's a way to do so many things at once. And I'll tell you that while on the infinite platform, I do teach about multitasking in a different way. In the traditional sense, multitasking is a massive energy leak. When you are trying to do multiple things at once, it is most likely that you are doing none of them well. I'll give you an example. Say I'm trying to write an email to a client while my husband is making breakfast and telling me a story and my son comes in and asks me a question. I'm not focused on the email anymore. I haven't completely heard my husband's question and what he's asking in the depth that I want to be able to listen and participate. And I have no idea what my son just said. So attempting to multitask, attempting to do these kind of things while watching TV or while spending time with the family or trying to do multiple things at once, it just doesn't work. It's much faster. It would be much faster in that scenario for me to ask both of them to pause. I finish the email. I send the email. I give my husband my full attention and I ask, you know, what he's saying and I respond in a way that makes him aware that I am present and I'm interested in what he is saying and I have fully addressed it and then turning to my son and doing the same thing. Then people feeling dismissed, feeling unheard, feeling like they have to come back and have this conversation again, 
because they they don't think you really got what they were saying or you didn't really answer it in a, a coherent way multitasking is a massive energy leak and the more you can train your focus the better you'll become at plugging that hole okay last mind energy leak is word choice Choosing your words is really important. If you say, I'm excited to show up here today because I love talking to you and sharing these things with you, that's totally different than I have to go record this video or I need to do my live show today or I should go get ready for my live show, right? Should, need, have to, these are words in general I have tried to completely eliminate from my vocabulary because they are very low vibrational, low energy words that deplete the energy that I already had. The reality is your words say a lot about how you feel about things. And if your words are not high energy, excited words, then chances are you're doing the wrong thing. That in and of itself is an energy leak. But looking at your words as a clue to where you're leaking energy is really effective at plugging that hole. All right, on to the energy leaks of the spirit. Holding on. This can be holding on to any number of things. This can be holding on to objects that no longer serve you. This can be holding on to people that are not good for you anymore, holding on to relationships just because you're afraid to let them go, holding on to a job that you hate just because you're afraid of moving on, holding on to the concept of a nine to five W2 job when you know you are an entrepreneur personality type and you're here to start a business and make a change, holding on to old ideas or expectations of yourself or objects and things hold you back from becoming the person that you're here to become. We don't, we don't come into this world finished. We, we fortunately know a lot more now than we did at five years old or 15 years old or 55 years old. We, we know more as we go on at 95. I will know more. I will be more evolved. I will be more myself than I am today at 48. And so holding on keeps us in the past, which keeps us out of the present moment, which is where we find happiness and joy. And it keeps us from moving forward into our future. That's a really sad energy leak. Tolerations. Tolerations is a huge energy leak. It is one that is just so mm, haunting to the spirit. It's just, it's depressing really. So what, so what do I mean by tolerations? Tolerations are the things that we tolerate in our environment, tolerate, you know, which we used to think was a good word, right? It meant like being patient and compassionate with other people. No, tolerations in our life are things that we tolerate when the real meaning of tolerance or toleration is it's delayed rejection. It's, it's things, you know, I might tolerate the way a, an employer speaks to me. Well, does that mean I like it? Is that like kindness and compassion and patience? No. It means for whatever reason, I'm not standing up for myself in the way that I should be treated. Right? Or I might tolerate things in my environment like the, you know, I, I don't even know. There are so many things. The pile of stuff in my bedroom that needs to be dealt with and needs to be moved, but I need to rearrange some stuff in the basement to be able to do that. Every time I walk by it, it annoys me. Every time I walk by it, it sucks my energy a little bit but I tolerate it being there because I haven't taken the time to do it. Those kind of things, the, the little things that are broken, you know, the, the clock that is uh, too slow or 
the little thing on the on the car like one of my car keys needs a new battery so every time I grab that key it is a pain but of course the battery stores are closed right now and it's not easy to fix but those kind of things are energy leaks and if we have a lot of them they can be leaking a lot of energy every single day taking care of those things eliminating those tolerations frees us up to do so much more okay Next energy leak for the spirit is the fear of saying no. As women, especially, we are really conditioned to say yes, to always be helpful, to say yes to anyone and everything. And the thing that's really important to remember is when you are saying yes to someone else, you are saying no to some part of yourself, unless it's something that you're consciously choosing to say yes. If I choose to drive a friend to the airport and that takes me an hour and a half, that's an hour and a half less that I have in my day now where maybe I miss my workout or maybe I miss that time with my kids or my husband or maybe I miss that time working on my business. Now, maybe it is that important to me to be there for that friend to take them to the airport, to show them the love and the consideration and to ease their burden, um, their pre-flight anxiety by taking them. And so maybe I wholeheartedly choose to do that. But if instead I just blindly say yes, because I don't really feel like saying no, that would seem kind of jerk-like or selfish, then instead I am telling my spirit that I put the other person first that I put that other person's needs, their pre-flight anxiety, their, their um, need for a ride before my need to meditate, to work out, to spend time with my family, to spend time on my business. And that doesn't fly for very long. That in and of itself is a massive energy leak. So you lose not only the hour and a half of time, you, you lose so much more by having told your mind, your body, your spirit that it's last, that it's behind someone else. And by no means am I saying that we should, you know, never be helpful and not want to do things for people. My point is it needs to be a conscious choice. And here I talk about word choices and I use, just use the word need. When it is a conscious choice, the energy around it is totally different, right? Then it's, I got to fill my heart with love and I got to spend this hour and a half with someone I really care about doing something I really care about instead of I had to go do this and now I don't get to do that. Learning to say no to the things that are a no to your mind, body, and spirit so that you can say yes to the things that are a yes is an exceptional way to plug that energy leak. Okay, elapsing time is another energy leak. What do I mean by elapsing time? You know, I, I talk a lot about investing time. I invest every minute of my day, either taking care of my health, taking care of my relationships, taking care of my, uh, you know, my business, taking care of my clients, taking care of creating impact, I invest every moment of time. When people are elapsing time, they're just sort of letting it go by as if it doesn't matter. This would be what most people would call wasting time, although I generally don't like to use that word because different things to different people are good uses of their time. On Mother's Day, it was, it was rainy, it was sleeting actually in Wisconsin, ridiculous in May. My kids and I and my husband, we watched three movies. There are people who would say watching three movies is a complete waste of time. To me, that was not a complete waste of time. It was awesome family time. It was loving, it was joyful, it was fantastic. That was not elapsed time. That was the way I chose to spend that time. Elapsing time is more like throwing in the towel with regard to whatever you're going to do. Consciously choosing to relax, 
consciously choosing that today is a day off and I'm just gonna be and just do whatever I want is entirely different than just kind of loafing and lounging around and next thing you know it's three o'clock and you don't really know what happened to the day. That's what I mean by elapsing time. It's just sort of letting it go without, without a thought or without the honor or respect that that time deserves. And that is damaging to your spirit. It's damaging to your soul. Your time is a gift that's been given to you. It doesn't mean you need to be doing something all the time. I spend a lot of time in self-care, a lot of time just being. That's what is helpful in me showing up in the way that I do with, with clients and with my family. It's not about doing. It's about honoring and respecting the gift that time is and choosing how we spend it. And when we are out of alignment in that way, we are leaking a lot of energy. Okay, people. People can be a huge energy leak. You all know the toxic people who just like suck the life right out of you. The ones who are always mad about something. The world is out to get them. You know, something has gone wrong every single time you talk to them and you just can't even bear to call them back on the phone because you know, even if it's only a half hour conversation, it's gonna kill the next four hours of your day because you're not gonna get that joyful high vibration energy back. People can be a massive energy leak and yet we don't necessarily think about that that way. You know, take look a look at the people in your household, the people in your extended family, your, your friends, your community, your coworkers, your employees, the people that you see on social media or on the media and notice how they impact your energy and the way that you feel inside. And by no means am I suggesting just writing all of those negative people off. There are reasons that we choose to stay connected to negative and toxic people. However, we can choose very consciously when and how and for how long we connect with them. I would not choose to connect with a very negative person at the start of a day when I am working with clients. I wouldn't choose to connect with a very negative person before I sit down to record videos where I really want to give of myself and share with you because I know what it will do to my energy. Now, at the end of the day, when all of the rest is done, if I need to make that connection, then I can consciously choose to do that. So being very conscious of how you're choosing to connect with the people in your life will stop that energy leak as well. And now you have made it to number 18, the last one that we're talking about today. And again, there are so many more. Um, if this is a topic that you like, let me know and I will, I will give you more of these. But the last one that we're talking about today is your environment. And this is your your physical environment of uh, the environment around you, the rooms that you spend your time in, your home, your work environment. Everything has energy to it. Things can feel very open and expansive and welcoming. They can make you feel very grounded and solid and safe, or they can make you feel very contracted and constricted and agitated because there's just too much stuff. There's, there's clutter here. There's, there's negative energy in these objects in this room, things that you need to go through. There's a feeling that you can't sit down to do something because you see 14 things that need to be done just to feel like you can relax in the space. Trying to work and be productive and engage with family and whatnot in a space like that is really difficult because it is a really big hole that's leaking all the energy out of the bottom of your bucket. And so shifting that energy, you know, starting in, in one area of your home, your workspace, and shifting it to feeling expansive and feeling 
open and inspired when you're in that area will make a huge difference in terms of your energy when you are working there uh, for work, whether you're working on your body in terms of cooking in your kitchen, sharing time with family or with friends once we can see friends in our homes again, all of that sort of thing, our environment has the opportunity to fuel our energy or to deplete it. And so often we choose to let it deplete it. This talk of these energy leaks today is all about the choices that we make and the conscious awareness to choose where we want to spend our energy and what we want to spend our energy on or what we want to invest our energy in. What we want to invest our time in because when we choose consciously then we are saving our energy not investing our energy it's a better word it's it's not saving it it's it's the opposite of wasting it we are investing it in our future and the people and the things that are important to us and I know that is something that all of you want I am recording tip videos today. So if there are particular areas that you want me to expand on, drop a comment and let me know and I will record a, a tip video for you on that um, because I'd love to keep this conversation moving forward.